This video goes over some different ways to represent data. And one of the things that we need to be able to do before we present the data is we need to organize it. There are two main ways to do that. We can use a frequency table or a stem and leaf plot, which really represent um, the same data but have some different benefits. Uh, so this example you can find uh, from our class notes, and I will post it on D2L afterwards so that you can see it if you missed it. But really all we're doing, you can probably picture, uh, we're going to figure out our favorite subjects of the students in our class, tabulate them, and then put the results in the frequency table below. So we might have three people that liked math, uh, eight people that liked business, two that liked art. What are we at there? Five and eight is 13. We might have nine people that like science. What am I at there? 22, we've got 29 people. Uh, so then we'd have three people that liked history and four people uh, that had an, another subject. So this is an example. This doesn't match our class results, uh, but it is the same idea. It's just to demonstrate what a frequency table is. It allows us to organize data into groups, we can also generate a stem and leaf plot given a collection of data, which also gives us kind of a visual picture of what it would look like if we were to do a histogram or a bar graph, uh, depending on our data. So in this example, Kyle got his friends to do a long jump and recorded the results. He got 2.3, 2.5, 2.5, 2.7, 2.8, 3.5, 3.5, 3.7, 3.8, Okay, and then the remaining. So what we're going to do is record the data in a stem and leaf plot. So the stems are going to be the whole numbers in this case. So I've got 2, 3, 4, and 5. We don't need this last column here. My leafs are going to be the decimal. So for every stem of 2, I've got 3, 5, seven and eight. For my threes, I've got two and six. Uh, and then here for four, I've got five and zero. Uh, and I should, I've got another five in here. And then I've got another six. So that represents all my data points. What I can see is that if I were to record my results, um, in a bar graph, I've got the most people that are in that stem of two. Gives us an idea of the overall shape. So we can further group the data into a class interval uh, based on this information in the stem and leaf plot. This one, it's not all that helpful uh, because we don't have that many data points. As you generate more data, it becomes... Uh, more important to be able to organize or to bin data. So here I could organize it uh, like this. And then I would have, so this would be my distance and my frequency. And then I would just count the values that I have for my stems. So I have one, two, three, four, five for two. And then I've got three for three one for four, and then one for five. So another way to organize your data, the stem and leaf plot, uh, if you had numbers, maybe heights of students, so you were looking at 160, 170, uh, you could use the first two numbers as your stem, and then uh, the ones digit would be your leaf. So what did I say here? So five, three, one, and one gives you an idea. So same information presented in a different format. Once you've organized the data, you want to be able to represent it. Over the next few videos, we're going to look at six ways to visually represent data, a bar graph, a histogram, a circle graph, a pictogram, a broken line graph, and a box and whisker plot. Today, what we're going to do is examine the first five. So a bar graph is useful for representing discrete data and bars are separated on the x-axis. This is the important part. A histogram is useful for representing continuous data, so they are not separated on the x-axis. 
A circle graph is used to represent proportions, often used for uh, voting percentages, and it's generated by calculating the central angle for each category. Pictograph is similar to a frequency table, but uses pictures to represent the number. Uh, it requires a legend to make sure you know what each picture represents. And then finally, today we're going to look at a broken line graph, which is useful for identifying trends, and it's generated by connecting all the data points with a line segment. You can draw all of these by hand, and that is great. We are going to use technology to create an example for each graph uh, using some of the information taken from the student survey that you filled out uh, before the break. At any point through this unit, if you would rather draw the graph by hand, that's fine. If you are comfortable using them, drawing them with technology, as I show you in this video, and you're welcome to ask me in class, I would recommend that you use technology. Any sort of job that you get into, a university program, is going to require you to use technology to present your graphs because they look much nicer when they're generated on a computer. They're easier to read, they're easier to analyze. So let's use the data. You can click the link. I'll have to open up the link here. Uh, so what I will do is I will show you in a separate screencast uh, an example of how to calculate each of these 